Hey, I admit it. I'm superstitious. Not about everything. I'm superstitious about boiler room projects on Friday afternoons. If you've been in this industry long enough, you too will become superstitious. Please sit back and allow me to explain how I got this way. Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel. I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. Today we're talking about two things that you should never do on a Friday afternoon in a boiler room. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a newbie, I hope you learn something new from this video. When I was an apprentice, the journeyman I worked with, Charlie, was worthless on Friday afternoons, afraid of doing anything but paperwork and cleaning checks on equipment. Anytime we found a repair to be done, he would say, that's not a Friday job, kid, that's a Monday job. The boss allowed this to happen because Charlie was a really good service technician. Monday through Thursday. When I became a fourth-year apprentice, I was allowed to do solo service calls, and I loved the freedom. One Friday afternoon, shortly after lunch, I noticed a leaking one-inch pipe nipple on a condensate pipe while checking the boiler. I got this, I thought, and walked to my truck to get the pipe wrenches. I knew I was in trouble when I felt the pipe nipple collapse when I tried turning it. The nipple broke off at the pipe threads still inside the fittings. A quick trip to my truck and I found a new threaded union and a 90 degree L. As I tried removing the elbow, the pipe attached to the other side of the 90 collapsed. I kept hearing Charlie's warning about Friday afternoon projects. I get it, Charlie, I thought. Luckily, I only had to go back to the next 90 to find piping which was in good shape. Scrounging through the truck, I found an assortment of nipples and a pipe coupling that allowed me to get the system back online. Luckily, the job was done by quitting time. On a different Friday afternoon service call, it was a winter p.m. on a single hydronic boiler. I noticed the relief valve was weeping. After checking the expansion tank and the pressure on the PTA cage, I realized it was a relief valve. Should I pop it and see if it closes? I could hear Charlie saying, don't do it, kid. I did it, and what a mistake. First of all, it starts chattering and the pipes are banging. I tried closing it by pushing on it. After several more pops, the chattering and banging stopped, but the leaking was worse than before. Calling the local supply houses, I found a relief valve on the other side of top. Of course it was across the town. There was traffic all the way to the supply house and back. Friday afternoon traffic is the worst. When I returned, I looked at the boiler inside. There was only one valve on the boiler supply, and nothing on the return. I heard you could open the drain valve and change the relief valve if you're quick, as a relief valve pipe will be sucking air for a few minutes. The only issue is this relief valve had female threads, so I'll have to put Teflon tape and pipe dope on the nipple coming from the boiler. To minimize the time needed, I unscrewed the relief valve until it was hand tight. I placed the Teflon tape and pipe dope on the boiler. Bending over, I opened the drain valve and stood quickly. I unscrewed the relief valve and it was sucking air. This really worked, I thought, as I wrapped the tape around the threads. As I was applying the pipe dope with a brush, the water shot out of there like a fire hose. I struggled to get the thread started, and after a few times it did. I tightened the relief valve and installed the discharge pipe. Looking around the boiler room, water was dripping from everywhere, including me. After two hours of toweling everything off, I left. My clothes were soaked, and I drove home, once again fighting the traffic. This was definitely a Monday project. I hope this helps you on your next Friday boiler service call. If you find this video helpful, Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireiceheat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. My boiler books are available on Amazon, and my technical articles 
are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.